Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Death's Gambit. For like the first two years of my channel, I recorded stuff in this kind of, um... Okay. Just has a weird hitch whenever I move doors. Um, I, re I recorded stuff in this sort of schema. Hmm. So that's when you pick up the mushroom as well as when you actually get it. Fragile Courage. Increase vitality by 15, distortive kill. The strength we find in dire times can propel us beyond limitations. But such illusions of grandeur are fragile and easily shattered. 15 vit though. Oh, Mega Man. Leaf of Gaia. Gotta hit the jump button now. Use attack while falling to briefly hover. Okay. Huh. Interesting. There's a mechanic in Devil May Cry where, um... I don't know what even happened there. There's a mechanic in Devil May Cry where shooting your guns will make you hover. And if you're using uh, Aerial Rave... The air attack. Uh, you will also remain in the air for the uh, duration of it. But something unusual is that you actually gain height on the first shot of your default pistols, uh, which are named Ebony and Ivory. So you can actually use that to gain just a little bit of height. For doing certain speedrun stuff, like... Um, oops. When you're using uh, Air Raid to move around, a little bit of height can mean a lot. Crap. <laughs> you guys are so annoying. Get out of here. I can't stand you. Ugh, platforming, my favorite thing. I'm getting too impatient. I'm, I'm just getting too impatient. Dude, that's not cool. We'll do that part later. Because now we're starting to be in the market for something to let us sit. Right, can't forget that I have an air dash now. That'll make things a lot easier. I can't believe I forgot I had an air dash. I don't know who you are. What is this place? You're not here for us, nor do you know of this spring. Most people have a stronger sense of purpose when risking their life. The blossoms nurtured by these waters cure various ailments when harvested properly. Hmm. Sounds useful. Can I have some? Mm. Alright. Panacea. Dark Empowerment Sigil. Immortalite Blade. 16 strength. 10% more damage than a regular longsword. If you take damage while it's out, the effect is removed for 35 seconds. Will of the Gaians. An immense sword carved with designs reminiscent of the Gaian stonework. Attacking enemies creates modes of life. Crushing down consumes four modes and reduces damage by 30%. That's poetic.
We are but floating eyes and a man. Creepy. What cruel fate has befallen poor Alistair, the scholar? If you actually still I'm very much alive, but are you sure? Are you trying to bait me? How rude. Throwing knives recipe. Cool. I see a thing. Hoi. I've got a map, don't I? Yeah. So that means I'm here now. This is me. That's Iona. Oh, he's gone. Strange. This leads up to that. Yeah. I love that you have a little animation for leaning off of a ladder. That's so cool. Such a good little attention to detail. Obviously, not every game that has pixel art is a, uh... Damn it. Forgotten guy in. Haha, can't do shit. See you later. Look, those mushrooms might do something. I know for a fact that they already craft something, at least. Oh. This is a dead end. So that means that I have to go the long way around. Let's not die, huh? Okay. Interesting that he left. Am I going to have to find him again with the stuff that I already know that I need? Because that'll be kind of annoying. I need 160. So, both heroic rematches I have encountered say level 30 on them. Does that mean that I must be level 30 before interacting with them? Because if this is the case, I will definitely come back and do all those. Or is it saying that the boss is now level 30? I don't know what level they would have been before. Okay, so I went up through here. There's all this stuff past him and those things. Oh, hey, it's you. Zuma, Acolyte of Death. Zuma, Acolyte of Death. You're one of the starting classes. I could play as you. Did he make you sign a contract too? What? No, I trade a path of spirituality. A liaison for his chosen. Namely, you. I can disenchant clutter in your inventory. Interesting. With the right materials, and can offer guidance regarding your newfound immortality. Cool. Or just come over and we'll bongo. I don't care. <laughs> You're fun. So I can make this into a plus three.
plus one white. Bless you. Sorry, my cat's sneezing next to me. Hmm. Oh, it just goes. So I have two now? Oh, so I would never have had enough. And those are those stones. I mean, I don't have any now. Interesting that the Acolyte of Death is so cheerful so as to be like... <laughs> the Acolyte of Death is so cheerful so as to be like a... Hmm... Shield of Warding. Reduces time of a negative status effects. Um, eerie shield with an eye in the center. Clearly the work of a sorcerer. The gold is indicative of Lanshan. Loshan? Uh, known for his keen interest in magical artifacts. This is a cruder example of his craftsmanship. Most of his creations being locked in vaults or in his personal tower out of fear might be misused by mortals. Am I getting through to you? Because I might need to come back with a higher damage weapon. Uh, yeah, I played Unworthy last summer, and like I was just so busy with everything, but I was really um, that I that I couldn't go back to it. But I was really unimpressed with it. Like. I know that it's that it's an indie project, and I felt so bad judging it harshly, but like, I didn't enjoy it at all. Like, there's this... In a game, you know, you normally have four movements that you can... Four directions you can move in. In a game, you typically have four directions that you can move in, right? You can jump up, you can fall down, and you can walk left to right in a two-dimensional game with jumps. Okay, so I went back down below, and that led to those things. Um, yeah, in a 2D game with jumps, a snail, just the item? Corpse snail adapted to the war life of Cyrodon. Shells are comprised of skulls and helmets, finding its nutrition in the home of the head of dead soldiers. Poisons if consumed. Okay. Um. Yeah, normally, in that context, you have... Uh, sorry, my cat's doing something. Four directions that you can move. And in a 3D game, you walk along a 3D plane and sometimes you get a six direction where you can drop. That doesn't go back up though, damn. Oh God. Phoenix Rider. Gotcha. You know, I'm aware that his uh, power over me grows every time I die. 
All right, I'm immortal. I still don't fully understand this power. Suppose it was too much for me to expect you to be the fine print. You exist in a state of limbo. Neither truly dead nor truly alive. Death, as you mortals know it, is merely one facet of its infinite complexities. Infinite. Make no mistake, you are in an unnatural state of flux. And it will take its toll on you. See, that makes me nervous because I am not fond of games where dying will, like, make it harder to continue. But if it becomes a problem like that, we'll talk about it. I talked about it a bit in Salt and Sanctuary, and I thought that game actually handled it pretty smart. Anyway, yeah, um, so like Dark Souls, you have five directions that you can move in because you can walk in four cardinal directions and you can drop. Occasionally, something like a... Oh, and that gives me back all my juice, yeah. Occasionally, something like an elevator will let you ascend, or something more egregious or a typical, like, a set of batwing demons, something like that. Two snails. Well, I got my phoenix feather back, so let's go back this way. What the hell are you? My god. You drop a chunk, though. God, what the hell now? I'm in the flame passage. Reminds me of a uh, Metroid Fusion. Um, yeah, and then in Elden Ring, you're able to jump as a default ability. That went through my shield. Triple. That was clean. I'm playing too messy. I, this is this is not the area to be messy in. Okay. You're the uh, phoenix. Phoenix Rider. Well, I'm doing 10% more damage. Two hearts beat separately, the Phoenix acting as a host while sustaining the Parasite with its infinite energy. Soul of the Phoenix. Hmm. Oh, this actually locks me on. That's useful. Well, if I can get through that without all the death, then... Oh, and I keep my essence. Does that mean that I can continue to level? Anyway, yeah, in Unworthy, you don't have the ability to jump. 
it's really weird, honestly, because like you're just running around and sometimes you drop. And if you drop, then you have to just go find a ladder. It's kind of painful, in fact, that that's what just has to happen. Like, it's really annoying that that's the case. But that's how the game works. And then another thing, as a stylistic choice, the game is in black and white. That's fine. There's nothing truly wrong with that as a concept. But it is so unappealing to look at after a, a long period of time. Oh, for God's sakes. This better not be a thing. Oh, there's one. All right, not bad. That's one sip down still. Still, I got a pretty good chunk through the boss with only one sip in the pocket. I'll do another run on the boss and cut the episode. Um. Yeah, it was just like so like hard to look at, honestly. Oh, are you dead forever? Nope, you're not. Oh, God. It would be to both of our benefit if you stopped dying. Go reclaim your phoenix plumes at my hideout if you've lost them. All right, that guy is too dangerous to just run away from. But yeah, Unworthy just, like, it was hard to look at. It was kind of ugly. Like, I know that it was a stylistic choice that, that they did that. I just... Ugh. After a while, it just didn't look that good. And by a while, I mean, like, two hours. Because that's about how long I played it for. And like, oh man, I, I hate that I, I had to hate it, but it was just so, like, it didn't look good to look at. It was kind of interesting. And, you know, it was very, very similar to Dark Souls in that it did not have a lot of story going in. And you could kind of start to try to maybe piece together some stuff if you really read every item description, but like... When the only pleasure to be had in a game is reading, why don't I go pick up a book? I'm an avid reader. I've read like five books this week and that's not a joke or exaggeration. I I actually have a book that I'm, I'm looking at on my desk right now. I picked up this really cool book on uh, Napoleonic armies in the context of war games. Um... There's a point made in the book that I actually kind of like where the Napoleonic era is so interesting for war gamers because the interesting blend of technology present at the time uh, the, the blend of technology available at the time and the uh, tactics involved mean that, you know, you can do a lot of, like, typical wargamey stuff. Like, you know, you can have melee ranks, and you can have ranged guys, and you can have cavalry. And you have the interesting, um, and you have artillery. And you have the rock, paper, scissors of cavalry, infantry, artillery. 
And that's an interesting game mechanic to play as. And the other thing is, is that when you have all these different armies going on and fighting each other... Man, it even charts how many times she's killed me. get past that attack do i just have to mash block you should level up i'm not sure what you're waiting for all right death <laughs> um i'll do another one just cuz i have something to talk about get everything that i like to 8 the additional health and the uh, strength should help me cut through a little quicker. I am willing to bet to beat my head against this. Um. Yeah, you have the, the you have the rock paper scissors of infantry, artillery, and cavalry. You know you have this the style elements of it. Two and two versus fit four. I will go ahead and take four fit. Um, yeah, and then also, like, technology is also at a place where, like, certain armies will exist, and they'll be, like, different, but they won't be, you know, like, unusual. Like, you can see that, like, with modern armies, everyone kind of has a very similar type of machine gun, and everyone has a machine gun. And, like, not that there's anything wrong with that. But it's just, you know... When, when doing wargaming with more modern stuff, people aren't very interested in it. That's why you get people who are... Like, wargaming will kind of stop at, at like, uh, World War II, I've noticed. Nice. All right, I'm at full health. Let's go. Look who's come crawling back to us. So using my uh, ability to get back stamina. on using an ability. That was interesting. I feel smart for myself. But she's still not damn. What do you want, boy? What do you dream of becoming? Whoa. Sorry. I'm going to be a soldier like you. <laughs> I'm glad. But you know I wasn't always a soldier. I don't know. You'll have plenty of time to figure it out. Just remember, whatever you do, give it your all. Okay? Hmm. Interesting. 
No snide comment from death this time. Hmm. Well, I did everything that I said I would do in this episode. I even took an additional try against the boss. So I guess I'll cut it here. Come see. Meditate, huh? What do you have for me? Scythe moves and tome. That makes sense. Well, I've been Alfred. This has been Death Gambit. Um, I'll see you guys next time. I had a good time. I hope you did too. I'll see you later. Bye.